All right. Kim. Yes, uh, I can hear you. All righty, all righty. You got in business. <laughs> hey. Oh, man, it made, it made me have to go through all this security type stuff just to, just to get the audio through. What's up with that? You know what it is. It's 2020. They got to get you to agree to agree to agree to, and then you can use it. Well, hell, they got hell. They got my not my number and information. They should already have everything they need. Exactly, but they still want you to sign it in blood. We don't know what we're agreeing to. <laughs> we just click yes because we need these tools. Like I have to use this for work. So even if I didn't want to agree to the terms, what are you gonna do? Exactly. See exactly. how they do. Yeah, I like that article you sent me about the Taco Bell, and I just seen that today on Google. And they were just simply doing their homework, right? Simply doing their homework. Simply doing yeah. their homework. But I thought it was interesting because I think, like, if we keep doing these discussions, you'll see I always have two different – I can see both sides. So, I mean, I don't know. I totally don't agree that that's bad parenting. Not only do I think that that's good parenting, I think the bigger issue is – why aren't we asking more questions that families are forced to be in that type of a situation where there's no equity? You can't control whether or not someone has Wi-Fi in their home and to force school to now be all digital. 50% of homes are in poverty. Yeah, and me, myself, I, I like technology. I, I always love my video games, the Sega, to Xbox, but it was always about repetition, you know, putting a, uh, getting a pen in my hand or a pencil and writing down something, learning how sure. to uh, read a map, uh, sure. write a letter, you know, and it's these things, you know, Wi-Fi kind of hinders some of my children. They don't have yeah. those natural, in a sense, abilities anymore or something. You know, it's like, like they lost something. I agree with that too. I mean, and that's, yeah, I mean, that's another layer, right, on top of all those other issues is the fact that is technology hurting or helping? But you see how sneaky everything works, because let me tell you, maybe about five years ago, so they're two years early, but five years ago, I started warning people. I started saying, you know, the, the, the goal is to get rid of books. They're going to change public education. Everything's going to be all online. They're going to make kids corral together in like a gym and put your kids online. And it's going to be a luxury to have a teacher watch because I could just tell with the industry I was in where everything was going to this digital space. Then boom, COVID happens. And now two years before schedule, now they're forcing your kids to not be in a classroom. Everything's digital. Coincidence. I don't know. I don't know, but yeah. So now it's just back no, to it's having just your imagination. Time. It's just my imagination. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, having had not. Yeah, let me ask you this. What, what, what do you think about so-called COVID? I call it so-called. Yeah, I don't know what to think. I feel like you would be a fool either way. You would be a fool to trust the people telling you that it is something. And then you will be a fool not to, you know, I think you have to stay vigilant either way. So put it, so put it like this. I'm not like, um, I'm not not wearing my mask, but at the same time, I'm also not, not hugging my mama or going to go see friends. Like I'm not, really? I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'll wear a mask. I mean, cause that's my, my big thing with like um, the anti-maskers and everything like that, it's like, I'm in my own home. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. This is my property. But when you go into a, a business, you have to respect their rights too. That's private property. So if, that, if that's the rule they have, then that's the rule they have. So this notion of you can't tell me what to do. Yeah, I can. You want your rights protected and I want my rights protected too. You're in my store. You're, you're on, this is my shit. But nobody's going to knock on your door and say, do you have your mask on? You know, not yet, at least. But well, I, know. I, know down, I know down in Nashville, they have a, a mandate down here. A couple of people got arrested That's uh, crazy. for not having a mask. But, uh, but, but, but see, once I do research on that, they're going against the law 
against the law, you know, telling the police, I ain't got to wear my mask, you know, da, da, blah, 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 blah. Of course, police going to do what they do after their second or third time trying to, you know, get order. But right. you disrespect them. What you think will happen? It is what it is. But um, yeah. people, are, they're, they're, they're scared. And I, me, I think they kind of playing off a little of the fear thing because can you remember chicken pox? Yeah. Now, if you can look at somebody, somebody at chicken pox, you, you get in the way. <laughs> this is back in the day. You remember this? Yeah. Yeah. So called this, you know, I don't see nobody just passing out. And these numbers, man, they vary. That's just me. That's just me. You know what's coming around the corner. What we got, November? For flu season. Yeah. Mm. But that, yeah, but that's that's what it is. It's like it's it's like um so the numbers are so high for the infected, but because the mortality rate is low. I just don't think they're getting the buy-in that they will want. I think if more people, I hate to say it, but if more people actually died from it, I, I think you would have a different reaction. But first of all, n n thank God, nobody that I know even knows anybody with it. So then you're kind of like, who, who's getting sick? What are all these numbers? And then you hear healthcare professionals saying they're inflating the numbers. If you go into the hospital for anything, they're kind of just checking the box. Like, it's the Rona. It's the Rona. That's it. So, like I said, you be a fool to trust them, but then you be a fool not to be prepared either way. Okay, I know, I know you got to go in a, in a minute, but let me, let me, let me cook on this. What we, uh, I sent you early on about the man spending forty-four years for touching Becky or whatnot. <laughs> that's 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 a hard hitter, ain't it? You know, That's 44 years, I would have been to kill somebody. You hear me? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I know I'm innocent. Really? I would have had a heart try really? to And how how do you even how do you even atone for that? Like to me, all that did was just say, and then and then maybe that's why everybody is so afraid to talk about reparations. And not everybody, but politicians like there's no way to atone for what happened to us like there's no way to atone taking 44 years away from that man's life how do you how do you even what could you do there's no monetary value on that he has just missed everything anything that he could have been or wanted to do people probably died you know mother probably died cousin child you know you don't know you couldn't get that time back you can't get it back you don't know he might have given birth to the child that eventually cured cancer we don't know he was robbed of that yeah you get you get deep with it look at you look at you wow well how do you yeah. think the practice run went, uh, went so far the what how do you think the practice run went so far for this one? Yes. I think, think it's cool. I think it's going good. I think it's going good. I think we have enough time to get a real one in. <laughs> I think we can yeah. get a real one in. Oh, really? Well, that's that's what's up. I wish I would have took some notes. But anyway, just freestyle with it. Yeah. So we'll what do you what do you think about the uh so called what was it twenty four hours? Uh, a twenty-hour strike of the NBA, <laughs> the NBA player. Disappointed. It's like Nick Cannon all over again. I was so excited. You, now, you, see, you have man? to say his name. Oh. I know, but that's that's what it's like for me because in both situations, I was surprised in the first place. Like, oh, they're gonna do something? No way. And I was really proud of them, and you know, just ready to go for to bat for them as they as they were on strike i was gonna i was yeah. prepared to boycott like you know what i'm with you that's what's up let's 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 flex our power because what we should have really done in my heart what we really should have done and i say we because i try to speak like a collective but what yeah. they should have done is hold out until somebody knocked on the door and and called the meeting and got every police chief from around the country on the phone and said, check this out. You better not kill not one more nigga. <laughs> not one more nigga in 2020, okay? <laughs> Just not one more. I, you better, I don't care what you have to do to your officers, but hear me and hear me good. Don't you kill one 
no nigga. That's all you have to do. Like just, just very minimal change just so that we could just see some type of progress. But yeah, they capitulated way too quick, way too quick. And, and then they pulled the super Negroes in, they pulled Jordan and Obama in, and it's kind of yeah. like, oh man. Hey, hold up. Then they got the builders for them. Okay, when you get up under your feelings, we want to have this place for you to go vote. It remind you of your team. Go to the Lakers Coliseum. What's, what's y'all Coliseum called? <laughs> the new stadium, Staples, the Staples Center or yeah, SoFi. Go to Staples Center, you know what I'm saying? Set up shop. Vote Democrat. Look, vote Democrat. Right. It's malarkey. You hear me, man? And it's right. sickening. LeBron come to, come to uh, uh, practice with a vote shirt on. Take it, man. Come on, homie. Yeah. I, we see it coming. To mm -hmm. It's crazy. Like you were just about to say, you see it coming from a mile away. Like, so not only did we get nothing out of the deal, um, the argument somehow shifted. Because if you notice, all of the players were frustrated over racism, over police brutality, over killing niggas. But then all of a sudden, after y'all went in the back room and closed the doors, everybody came out and the agenda is voting. What, what happened? <laughs> what happened? How is that the solution? Cause that's not the problem we were, that's not the problem we were talking about. And they're definitely not the people to push that message because you guys gathered that information and, and, and shared that with us that only 20% of them are even registered to vote. So how is it that collectively that's the message you decided to walk away with? That they're not even, they're not even voting. So why are they pushing the message to vote? Well, I, I believe... Think the problem was they wanted y'all to stop killing niggas. Is anyone going to address that? No, oh, no, they're not going to do that. These people not even getting charged. And then did you see the article where the guy who was affiliated with Breonna Taylor, they want him to uh, 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 put out some type of evidence. I don't know if I read it right or whatnot, but she's involved with some, 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 some foul shit. What's up with that? I heard that. They I I have a nickname. I have a nickname for Mr. I call him TNN because that's how I get my news. So I don't watch any news or anything like that because I try to protect my energy. I'm very sensitive. I'm, I'm like an empath almost. So I take energy in. But if TNN tells me it's something I need to know about. So yes, that was reported to me. And I think that's crazy. That's crazy. Like, oh my goodness. That's... They're going to make him say that. If you want to save your own self, which you know he does, then you'll go ahead and say that this little girl was basically the head of her own <laughs> her own crime family. And they went in there busting. Just, just unload. God. But wasn't I mean, it was clear bad. to you from the start that that was a hit? I mean, that's that was clear. That wasn't an accident. Like, you took out who you wanted to take out. I don't know what she was involved in, but whatever she was involved in, um, she got killed for it. So I'm not even saying they're lying. You understand what I'm saying? Because the fact that you kicked down her door like that and, and you shot the target, I don't know what she was involved in, but it got her killed, whatever she was involved in. How about yeah. that? Yeah, man, it still doesn't make it right. It still doesn't address the issue. The, it's like all these stories, the underlying thing. Stop killing niggas. You know what else? You know what else is killing niggas? What? Uh, Red uh, Kool Aid. No. Uh, skin, <laughs> skinny jeans. Skinny jeans. <laughs> skinny <laughs> jeans, man. I, I'm like, what the fuck is this? What is this? Fact. And you have grown men my age, <laughs> my age, wearing these tight ass nut huggers, and they sagging them. Uh huh. Oh, I don't understand. You hate to see no, it. Hate to... And look, I think Little Wayne started that trend, didn't he? I don't know if he started it, but he definitely brought it to the masses. Like, it's cool. Look at me. Mm. Well, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they have those same jeans 
in the Dollar General store uh, before they started charging $150 for a pair of jeans, them same Levi jeans now. Right. And they just put a little, little a red little sticker on it. Right. That's it. Right. Now it's $150. Well, let's talk about it. Capitalism. <sighs> You say, what else I is killing it. us? I, I capitalism. Kind of love capitalism. <laughs> it is a love hate relationship. Every, so I every hear you. Gotta love, yeah, every hustler got to love capitalism. You got to take advantage of what you can get. But then you, you know, can't complain what? about everything that comes with it because I agree with you. I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it goes hand in hand with America, the love hate relationship. You may hate this country, but um, just write down a list of. 10 other countries that have a government system that you agree with, that you think is working. Um, so you, you can say what you want to say about democracy, but do you have another example of what we might replace it with? And it's the same thing with the science of, of capitalism. It's perfect. And, and just speaking as an economist, it should work perfect. But of course, human error is going to flaw both of those systems. Humans are fl what's making this democracy flawed and human greed is what's making capitalism law because here's the thing about capitalism um it, it it requires you to exploit labor so you know our now we got to talk about slavery that's what capitalism is you got to exploit labor now let me ask you this since we own uh export some type of labor mm -hmm. now far as like when foreigners come over here you know they i i, I work with some I work well, I work in different warehouses and I got to, you know, the gist and the feel on how they really think about us. You know, there's some, some, not some, some are cool, but they like to use you. Uh, they uh, don't, you know, talk behind your back, just like anybody else would, but they just do it. You know, they come over here get advantages, uh, opportunity, mm -hmm. but yet they call us lazy and everything. But I asked one of them one time, I got, I, I got, it was, it was a heated conversation, but I asked, I told him, I said, man, listen here, we were born over here. We didn't ask for this. You signed up. Homie, why'd you leave? Right. And see, once again, you know, I, I've heard that they used to get lectured before they came over here about us. Mm -hmm. And the stereotypes been, you know, uh, been passed that way. And some will really act on it until they really see the, the gist of America, you know. It's a wicked country. It's, it's very wicked. But it's, it's hard to imagine living somewhere else, you know what I'm saying, like you mentioned. But it's, it's got this flaw. <laughs> it does. It does. Flaws. But, it's you know, flaw. but to your point, that is why we do have an immigration uh, problem. First of all, every country has an immigration policy. So I know they, they, I know you hear so many stories about our immigration policy, but we don't. America doesn't even have the strictest immigration policy. It is very hard to migrate and to become an expatriate. Like if, if I just wanted to just move in somebody else's country as an American, it is very, very difficult. Um, so to your point, we make it very easy for you to come and set up shop here. And it is cold. It's a cold game that because of that structure of capitalism, it's all about the pyramid. And so if you're going to say that you can earn money, you can become part of this top, you can't be on top unless you have people in the bottom. Somebody has to occupy the bottom. And it is cold that they tell everybody, you know who's on the bottom and you know who we should keep at the bottom? Niggas. It is cold. I hate it. I, I wish we would recognize our power. And I think this goes right back to the NBA strike. I wish we would recognize our power and either topple that system or make it so that the narrative changes. You know, I feel like we can come together and change the story so that instead of people saying, when you get to America, don't do business with the niggas, you don't have to respect them, that they know those are all kings and queens. Those are all gods and goddesses. Don't disrespect them. They're smart. They're powerful. I, I do think that we can change the narrative. Because again, unless you're going to get rid of capitalism, somebody has to be at the bottom. That's just it, because it's all about consumerism. If I'm selling you something and I'm making money, somebody has to buy it. So 
just by us saying, yes, we want to participate in capitalism, we're guaranteeing a, a, a middle class, we're guaranteeing a, a class of poverty, because mm -hmm. that that is just how it works. It's just the science of it all. In order for you to have 100, somebody has to have one. Otherwise, we would all have the same, and that's not what capitalism is. That's why there's billionaires and millionaires and check to check and, you know, on the street. Yeah, and you know what? And that check to check, see, that's what's roaming in my head right now. I'm, I'm trying to find uh, me in my space of life. Uh, I want to learn. I'm very ignorant on investing. I don't know mm -hmm. anything about investing. But I want to start in, want to start investing because I think about my 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 child, he, his children. Yeah. And the wealth is passed on. That's why I listen yeah. to Dr. Boyd Squad, because he makes a lot of sense. But you also have to be very stern and living that way, you know. But I think we need to, like I said, check to check. That is not a comfortable way of living. No. You know, putting your stuff in somebody else's pocket, that is not what's up. Right. But if you think about it, right, going back to these foreigners, if you think about it, all we really have to do is change the narrative because we know what it is. And you never, you, I just said this line today earlier, you, we can't live in a world of, of what it should be in the what is. We have to deal with the reality. And the reality of the situation is a lot of us are in the situation of check to check but even with us not controlling any of the wealth, right? We control 1% of the wealth. We occupy a lot of the poverty class. We occupy some of the middle class. Even with those statistics, you talk about investing, we, we spend a trillion dollars. So we are propping up the system of capitalism. We are the consumers. And it would be so easy for us to topple the triangle. It would be so easy for us to topple the triangle if we would pull our resources and work together. There's no problem with living check to check. The problem is that on, at the same time that we want to unify, now, generation after generation after generation, we're adopting these American European ideals of being separate and not tribal. So other cultures, they live together. Other cultures, they don't kick their kids out until they go, you know, till they're married or they're ready to buy them a home. So if you got a piece of a job and you got a piece of a job and you got a piece of a job, but we're only paying one mortgage, you could stack and win. But our people just kind of taking on the master's traditions you got four or five people in a family. Everybody got an apartment. Everybody's paying rent, making somebody else rich. Big mama scrimped and saved for that house. And as soon as she passed, y'all fought to sell it, to spend the money on what? A car, a charger, a Louis Vuitton purse. And now you don't have anything to, to call for when you could have just really just all lived up in that mug and been balling simply because no matter what job you have, if you don't have to pay for housing, that's your, mo that's your biggest bill. That's anyone's biggest bill. So it's just a mindset. It's just a shift. So I love voice walk-ins too. I think that that's like, um, that's the ultimate goal. It's the first is the mind shift of you do make investments every day with your time. Sure you, do. you see what you choose to do and what not to do. And when you go to a store, that's an investment. I'm going to invest in this rather than this because I'm going to get a return on it. It's simply just a matter of shifting your mind and getting a pool of uh, that pool of resources together. And then just like how it was just so random that, you know, you would, you would be connected with people the way that, this is happening. It's just always just divine timing. Like you ask for it and it will come. So that's, that's pretty much what I think about that. I think I, I'm in that same boat as well. Everything I do now I have an heir. Now I have a child. That's what it's all about, but it's continuously preaching to my own family. You, you got to come together. You got to come together. It don't make no sense for us to be separate like that. That's we're not. That's gonna be really hard for us to win and get generational wealth. Yeah, I concur to that. I mean, all day. But you, that's just like the average uh, black family. Go get your education. Give all these people your money. Go get a loan. See how much you qualify for. It don't matter. You pay that. You pay that off. Pay that bill off. Get that education, and then get that job. Be that that's tool. Amazing. That's to right. make somebody else rich and don't edify yourself at all. 
Forget your time. You don't have any. <laughs> All right. Now, let me just say, because I am Miss Cotton and, I, you know, I am an educator. So I, ha I feel a certain way about that. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not going to push back too hard because, uh, believe it or not, I do. I agree with you. You know, I don't think that college is for everybody. You know, it ain't a seat at Harvard for everybody. Somebody is going to have to go to the poll. That is true, you know. <laughs> And um, no, that's 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 one hundred percent true. I think college is is for who college is for, and I hate that we push it on students. You know, I hate that because or push it on people because it's like, I am a teacher and I have to have those hard conversations with parents, and I'm like, there's nothing wrong with your child being a C student. You were a C student. Why do you think that you gave birth to a little genius? Like, it's okay. You know what I mean? Most of us are C students. And the ones that aren't probably have that preordained feeling that I, I'm going to go and get an advanced degree because I'm scholarly. But if you sat here and struggled your ass through middle school, you struggled your ass through high school, why would you sit around and pay to struggle at the college level? It ain't for everybody. Stop telling kids that. Sell the truth, the dream of, um, first of all, education isn't parallel to, to intellect, right? The more educated you are, doesn't mean that you're smarter than someone else. It just means that you have more schooling and you may become specialized in a particular area, but you're not smarter than somebody else because you have more education. That's number one. And then number two. Oh, God. Miss Cotton over here teaching home. She over here teaching. It's true. <laughs> it's true. And number two, I was just having this conversation earlier, okay, uh, about it's difficult. We're, we're um, in the same age group. And so the thing is, we're talking about elders, right, that are teaching us the best they know. And we can't really get mad at them because no, no parent, no elder is going to tell you something that they think is harmful. They're telling you the best that they know because that's how you used to succeed keep your head down you know just find you a good lady get a house get you a good job go to school they're telling you their pathway to success because that's how you used to be able to make it and even though we do kind of have to push back on that because we see that's not the only pathway we also have to honor and understand why they're sending that message they only want the best for us and for them in that era, that was the best. Now look at, <laughs> you know, now look at our babies, right? Cause I find myself looking at them like, oh my God, what are these kids doing? They want it right quick. Now they get it. Not only, not only do they not care about going to school, they want it right now. Everybody's an entrepreneur. Everybody has their own business. Everybody wants it right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. And like my contemporaries are like, kind of like, yeah, that's good. I, I get it. I understand. I may have to do, do something a little bit different. I may have kicked down some doors for you to be able to say, I want it right now and I'm not waiting. But we're still trying to caution the babies like, wait a minute. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? So all I'm trying to say is every generation is only doing the best they know how to do. But yeah, school ain't for everybody. Don't get yourself into debt if you sat there and struggled all through high school. It only gets harder. Do not give anybody thirty, forty thousand dollars to to struggle. If school ain't for you, it ain't for you. I tell anybody who's trying to uh, complete a goal, I just tell them like this: simple as simple as this. You know, Batman didn't become. Excuse me, Bruce Wayne didn't become Batman in one day. Okay. That's it. That's it. He had to go through some pain. Hell yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's right. And, and he and had the money behind him. And this still doesn't happen overnight. Oh, I gotta keep my yeah, eye on the clock because yeah, I gotta yeah. tell you that at five o'clock my time, you know, the game is coming on. And I'm very interested in seeing oh, who wins oh, with OKC in Houston because that's who we're playing. So no, we gotta go. Hey, you, I, I know you want OKC. I know you want OKC to win, don't you? I thought <laughs> you don't that. want to play Houston. Dude. No, I thought that. Then I was taught. I thought that. I was like, because I don't want to play Houston. But then, like, Mister was reminding me. You know how sometimes there's just a team that plays you well. They're like the thing. He's like, it really doesn't matter because 
OKC plays us well. You know, Houston, they, we, we basically are going to have a problem either way it goes. Even though you think we want OKC, when we've played them in the regular season, they got our number. Like, they're not afraid of us. Like, oh, shit. But we'll see. Light work. Let me ask you that. You, you, you recording this? Yeah. This one's, yeah. You are? Hey, well, you already knew to go, to go ahead and spread that thing. And uh, I appreciate your time, sis. This was lovely. We're going to edify. We're going to make it much better next time. I know. Well, I was going to tell you, I came down here from a full day of work, so we don't have no glam together. This is just like I'm in my basement. <laughs> it's like, man, look at me. let's get it look done. Me, man. I, I ain't, no problem. No problem. We'll do that. But it we'll was cool. Like, it's like an easy oh, flow. Yeah. You see, I talk a lot, oh, though, yeah. so you're going to have to. No, I, I oh, that's good because you, hey man, you you know you you you, uh, you articulate very well. Look at come on, hood dude, you feel me? But you can be, you now, know, there you, you go. Be. Yeah, see, there you go. That doesn't mean anything to me. No, it that doesn't, doesn't matter. Mean. Just like that paper doesn't make you smarter, neither does diction or articulation. That doesn't that doesn't make you smarter. The message is the message. It is. It is. It's so true. But you know, you you make your brother one step his game up, real top. But it's well, all, all right. Good. Cool. It that's is. hey, that's right in line with my mission. That's really all I want is to leave the world in a better place, <laughs> peace and prosperity. All right, that's what it is. Talk to you next time, sis. All right, peace. All right, peace.